everybody, I'm Dusk. Welcome to Realm of the Sacred Roots. I wanted to jump right in it today and talk to you about five reasons why I left the church. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you like my videos. That way you'll get a notification every time a new video comes out. Well, it was important to me that I make this video. I'm really passionate about um, why I left the church. It's one of those subjects with me that it's a bit touchy because it's something that I believed in for a long time, going to church, talking with others, being able to fellowship and worship at the same time. I love the music mostly. Um, being raised in church, and just to give you a little background, uh, as soon as the church doors were open, my family was there. We were the church, the ushers, the choir, um, you know, from deacons to treasury, everything, greeters, um, taught in Sunday school, the whole, the whole thing. And so that's how I was raised. It wasn't until I got older did I start to see some of the negative impacts church had on me. Of course, there were some positive ones because as parents, um, my parents wanted or I believe they are raising their children the right way, what they would call the right way in church so that they wouldn't go astray. Um, but there were some things just being a spiritual child uh, as I was growing up that uh, didn't stick right with me for a while. So let's go down a quick list of five reasons why I left the church. The first was the hypocrisy. Let's start there. And I think most people who have been in um, in the church or any type of religious, it, 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 it's the hypocrisy that you believe in the Bible and that people will preach the Bible, but it's taking different pieces and parts of the Bible that work for that individual. And then um, the things that they did or that they sinned and didn't live properly, those were the things that they omitted or didn't seem like they needed to call themselves out on. So you tell me that my tattoos were wrong uh, because I'm defiling my body, but yet you go outside and have a cigarette or you drink at night um, or you'll fornicate because you're heterosexual and you, let's just say you choose to fornicate because you're not married, right? But then you, that's okay, according to them, to some people. But then you're upset at those who are gay. Um, I, I it didn't make sense to me. Um, it's like picking shoes. So your sins were okay, um, but other people's sins were not. And I just still don't understand that to this day, how people are able to judge other people and not uh, see themselves clearly. That just baffles me. I was in this class. I was in, they called it a master pastor class that I took. I think it was over the course of a year or something to that effect. I had to pay for it in the church. And we went around to the different kind of stations in the church. So you knew what the sound guys were doing. Here's how the money's help, dealt with. Uh, it, was, it were things like that. Here's how the bookstore is run. And, you know, one day I came in uh, and to the, I was in the bookstore station. And the lady that was in charge of that had like secular music blaring. I don't know if it was Michael Jackson or whoever it was at the time. It was just blaring in the bookstore. Now, we're supposedly on holy ground. We're supposedly in a church. Um, you know, and I'm going through this class that's supposed to elevate, you know, your mind where you're learning how to be more of this prophetic, more of this pastor-like evangelist type uh, setting. And yet the secular music was blaring. I couldn't. I couldn't understand or balance out that these people who were supposedly teaching me how to live and be weren't even living up to what they claim they believed in. And so, again, I have no problem with people smoking, with people who are gay, with people who are fornicating, if you have tattoos on your body, if you play secular music. But don't tell me that you're a so-called Christian and 
um, you believe in this book, but yet you don't follow those rules in a book. That's where my disdain for the hypocrisy comes in. Just don't tell me that you're this one thing and this is what you believe. However, you are going against what you say you believe. That's, I think, what that was the first thing that got me. We had our pastor uh, going into strip clubs and preaching. I mean, literally going into the clubs, uh, the strip clubs to preach to people. Some things just didn't pass the test, the smell test. It just wasn't right. And those were the things that were... Um, or unacceptable to me. Um, so that was the first thing. The second thing was the offerings. Uh, the basket went around three to four times at least in one service. And they had two different services during the day, right? So um, you had your offering, you had your tithe, you had your building fund, and of course we have pastor's appreciation. And so the basket was constantly going going around people are continually giving their money and you know we had a hotel that the church wanted to buy and that was like the building fund and they said oh when we have our conferences you know we can all we can stay there for free basically you guys don't have to pay you know we'll just be able to stay there and have a great time so people are giving including me to this building fund which we all finally paid off they made a big announcement they paid off the building fund and that was great and that was exciting. Um, except one fact, which was a few years later, we found out that that building, I think they ended up selling the building or was in foreclosure. It was some type of drama. And I'm like, wait a minute, I thought we paid that off as the church. I thought the plan was we were going to use that as our conference uh you know we can stay there during major conferences and of course that's not what happened so that was quite disturbing um so basically we were lied to obviously we didn't get our money back uh for that so it was things like that with the money going around and not being used the way they said it was going to be used so that was disturbing um I have my third list here, which was the pastors taking and stealing money. They, granted, this may not be, this list may not apply for every church. Um, there, I'm sure there are churches out there and I'm sure there are, are denominations out there that the church actually does what they say they're going to do. In this case, the pastors, you know, are living in mansions on the water. They have their their Bentleys that they're driving. Um, but the church people were poor. They were broke. I mean, pretty much. Um, homeless people in there. Uh, people struggling to pay bills. You'd hear the stories. And I think the dis just the, the disparity was just too wide. It was just like, wait a minute. How can you live like king and queens? Not that pastors can't have money. But how can you live like this? And your people, your flock, they're hurting, they're struggling. Um, it was just too big of a gap for me to try to bridge. Um, instead of us giving money to the offering plate, how about I just start giving money and helping the people that are around us in the church? Let's maybe start here. Let's start in our own home, right? Before we keep uh, funding your, your, your Mercedes and your Bentleys and your mansions, your multiple estates. So that was my third issue. My fourth issue was more of the interpretation. Um, uh, of course, every preacher has their own interpretation of what they're reading and of the Bible. Uh, they have their own interpretation of demons. Um, but I think my biggest issue was not wanting to, one, look outside of the Bible. There are other books then some that are even older than the Bible um, that were referred to in the Bible, for instance, the book of Enoch, you know, that are referred uh, to. And it's like, why, um, why not look at other sources of information versus this one 
book. And I think just getting stuck on that one book, it took me a while to break out of that and start looking at multiple sources and saying, wait a minute, you know, there are other things here that make sense um, that uh, that we can actually look at to get more information on this topic. It's It made no sense to me. It's like, okay, if it's not in the Bible, then we don't believe it. And like blinders are on. And I'm thinking that makes no sense. You have to look at other sources. But I think the one excitedness of it and to be honest even you know I apologize this is kind of a rant here but even the fact of exercising demons you know that's another story probably for another time but their view on that seems so one-sided uh that um I actually had issues with that I'll, I'm gonna do another video on um demon attacks and sleep paralysis and things like that but uh, I had to break out of that mindset in order to conquer some of those interactions that I've had with demons uh, but thinking of it so one-sidedness from the church made it difficult to do that it took me a little while to break out of that mind that 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 paradigm that I was in so I guess you know that was my my fourth thing is the interpretation. Everyone has their own interpretation of what they're reading. And that's fine if you go to church and, you know, you can either take or leave the pastor's interpretation or not. But um, uh, I just chose not to. The church that I was going to at the time, I, I just, I didn't, I didn't want to give them another chance. I felt like I gave them a couple of chances and you know, it, it, I was pretty much done. Well, anyways, my fifth bullet here um, was basically worshiping the pastors. I think what happens is is that these pastors um, on a super get on get to be on a superstar sort of level, and uh, it seems like the people start to almost worship the pastors and. Um, you can't talk to the pastors. You can't reach them because they're so high up of a level. If you're in a mega church, that you can't even reach them. And there was such a difference between knowing who your higher power is, God, your your higher power, or um, and separating that from the pastors. And I think that's a big that's a big deal to 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 separate. And in being raised and sometimes brainwashed by the church, you start to see the pastors as this superhero kind of figure. And it's dangerous and it's a slippery slope because you start to accept some of the behaviors from them that aren't appropriate. But because they're on this superstar level to you, it's like, okay, well, it's okay, it's fine. And it's not. They're held to the same rules as everyone else is held to. So my big lesson at the end was separating, and it took me a while to be away from the church to learn this, separating my spirituality from the church. My spirituality is completely separate from the church. So those were the five things, those were the main things of why I no longer go to church and why I left the church. Um, really no specific order. Harmful effects uh, that came from that, because I'll probably put this video under religious cult and its harmful effects under my playlist. Uh, the harmful effects, I would say, it really scarred me from trusting, again, as far as the church goes. Not all people are bad. I can't put a blanket on all churches. You know, that's my disclaimer. However, I choose not to go back. Um, I, the hell, fire, brimstone, if I had to add a number six to my list would be that. Every time going into church and you're telling me I'm going to go to hell, I'm going to burn because I'm a sinner. I don't want to hear that. I actually believe, you know, my God is a God of love. And though um, the churches want to preach that to me. I just didn't want to hear every day I'm going to hell and I don't know anyone that does. So, you know, try another approach church. 
it, it's it's just not cool and nobody wants to hear it i sure as hell did not want to hear it so the harmful effects would be the trust issues between me and the pastors between me and the people who were supposedly in their hierarchy of helping uh the church that would have been my uh, probably the harmful effects portion of it and the brainwashing the control you have to now undo those things that's not an easy um that's not an easy thing it's almost a cord that has to be cut it's one of those attachments that's icky and um you have to break free of that so you can find yourself and find who you are and still have a relationship with your higher power but not bogged down by the brainwashing and the control of religion. That's the difference. Um, the advantages would be, as a friend, a good friend told me before, I have the advantage of seeing things from that side since that's how I was raised. So if I do spiritual counseling with someone, I have the advantage at least of having that type of background where others might not. And it would go the same with any um, religion, if you have a background uh, and you're doing spiritual counseling with someone, it gives you the advantage at least to be able to see things from a different standpoint, from a different view. So I guess there would be advantages to that. Um, but with every religion, I take what I can use and I throw away the rest. It, n no religion is perfect. I don't belong to any religion or religious group anymore. I just, I don't, um, I don't believe in it. So do what you like. Um, I believe that live and let live, but just don't claim to be something that you're not living. If I claim to you that I'm living this type of magic life, that I do speak with the animals, that I am one with nature or that I'm, um, whatever I claim, I am actually living that life. I'm not a hypocrite. I'm actually, I meditate three or four times a day. I am actually speaking to these spirits. I live this life. It is who I am. I have no reason to be a hypocrite and to lie to others. So that's my big takeaway. Um, what do you have to gain from lying church? So... Anyways, we all have to walk our own path, but I wanted to share with you today my five and now six um, reasons why I, left, why I left the church. So make your own mind up, but definitely get out from the brainwashing and the control. Figure your own path out. Please like and subscribe. See my other videos and I'll see you next time.